So today we're going to be talking about pedestrian flow simulation. Why do you use it? What is it? And I will talk a little bit about the AnyLogic software, walk through an example model, and then have some time for question and answers at the end. So we can start by talking about facility design issues. So facility design is more than having the right number of offices or workstation and having the right number of bathrooms and exits in your facility for the appropriate capacity. Are there enough security checkpoints in your facility to make sure that your data is protected? Are there enough exit and entrance routes to ensure the safe evacuation in case of an emergency? Not just the ones that exist, but are people really using them? Um, the placement of your ticket counters. Is this blocking doorways? Do these seemingly simple choices really, in fact, affect the way your environment works for you? And are you making the best use of your space? So some of the results of poor design, they're not just inefficient choices. These can have legal ramifications or even a loss of business. So if you lack the proper security setup, your data or your HIPAA patient records can be compromised. Maybe, you know, a turnstile, if there's nobody there to see you jump the turnstile, it doesn't really matter that you had one. This is about people interacting with the environment. If you have proper exits, but no one's using them, it could result in injury or even loss of life in an emergency situation. Maybe that door is obscured and it's around the corner somewhere and no one really realizes it's there. Um, if you put a service area in the wrong place, this could make you look overly busy or it could be blocking the door in the case of an emergency. Think about going to a restaurant and the hostess stand is right there by the door and a long line backs up. Do you really want to go into that restaurant? You assume there's going to be a very long wait, so maybe you go elsewhere. No matter what, if any of these things are happening or things like this, if your building isn't working for you, you're missing out on possible revenue streams and maybe even opening yourself up to very expensive fines. So pedestrian flow simulation can help with problems like these. What it does is allow for a visualization of the system from many different angles. Maybe a bird's eye view, maybe from a weird tucked away corner, Regardless, you're outside of the system, so you can see things that just walking around your facility wouldn't allow you to see. Uh, you can do this before the facility is built in the planning stages, and maybe you're wondering the best place to put an extra emergency exit or the best way to configure the offices. This way, that there's no cost of retrofitting, you can actually test out what you've thought about before any money has been spent to make that happen in the real world. But on the other hand, you can do this in an existing facility. This has the added benefit of having real data and real information about the way your building is working, and you can kind of get a sense of that face validity of what the model is doing. But you can also say, you know, I think that there's some sort of problem happening with my service. And maybe you can't find it by walking around, but this could help you actually find the hidden bottlenecks. Or it can help you simulate emergency evacuations. We all, of course, don't want those to have to be used in the real world, and this would be a great way to test those on your existing facility. So how do we go about this? This is just a means to understand the way that your facility and its occupants and visitors are interacting together. It's a your building is not a static item. So all of the things in your environment can be put into the model. So this could include the entrances, the exits, um, any sort of walkable areas. Maybe it's not where you intend people to walk, but if they can do it, they might choose to go that way. So that should all be in there. Um, where are people waiting for service? Where are people hanging out, looking out of a window? These kind of waiting areas can be in there. Uh, whatever services you're providing, so a ticket counter at the movie theater, the hostess stand, uh, the check-in counter at a hospital, that service provision area is also included. And finally, the floor changers. Here we have a picture of some escalators, but also elevators and stairwells would be included in the layout, and your pedestrians would interact with that just like they do in your building. So, any logic is a great way to implement this pedestrian simulation. So AnyLogic itself is a multi-method software 
meaning it can handle systems dynamics, agent-based modeling, as well as the discrete event that we're all very familiar with. Uh, there's a pedestrian flow library built into AnyLogic that makes this um, ideal for these kind of projects. So one of the great benefits of AnyLogic is that it's very easy to run the model without having to worry about special software or licensing issues. So you could easily take our final model and share it with all the decision makers in your company. Um, by the end of the year, with the new release of AnyLogic coming out, this will be all cloud-based, and you can do it on any browser, on any device. So there's no worries about having to get everyone together with the right computer and everything like that. Um, if you do want to look more closely at the model, the Personal Learning Edition is a free version that's available for download. Another great thing, especially with the pedestrian models, is that AnyLogic has great 2D and 3D graphics. They're very simple to implement, and they really add a lot to visualizing your space. And finally, I just want to point out that AnyLogic is an interoperability leader. So if we look at this little graphic here, we see lots of softwares that AnyLogic is specifically designed to interact with. So you can easily import your data in most any way, the format that it's probably already in. You can export the results easily to the systems that need to make use of that information. And this is all done with minimal transformation of the data, so you don't have to spend a lot of time fixing things up so that it's compatible with any logic. Um, a great example of this would be, one, you could import the CAD drawings, and the layout can just be traced into any logic that way. Or for, say, a company that has a great HR security database that knows when people come to work because it's all recorded, your model wouldn't necessarily be generic people walking around. It could be the actual people that work for you following their actual behavior patterns that we can import from, say, an Excel sheet that your security software already makes available to you. So here at PMC, we can leverage the many features of any logic for whatever your project needs are. So there's people that are well-versed in all of the systems dynamics, discrete event, and agent-based uh, paradigms, and all of these can coexist not only within the same software, but within the same model. So an example of why this is such a benefit is imagine that you're a retail store and you're thinking about running an ad campaign. Now, if your ad campaign goes over too well, you could have so many people in your store that you're actually going to decrease customer satisfaction, and you wouldn't want to over-saturate your store like that. So what you would do in other software is you would test kind of a worst case, best case scenario of what demand your store could truly handle. But that's not really related to the ad. So in any logic, you could take your systems dynamic portion to model the ad, and then that would feed the demand into your retail store. This way, you're getting an accurate sense of how the ad changes demand and what that means for your customer satisfaction metrics at the end. Now let's move to a demonstration model here. So if we just stop for a minute and look at the layout. So this is a subway entrance hall. So we see quite a few different escalators. We see a couple different street level um, ways to get into this entrance hall. Um, these yellow objects here are going to be the turnstiles that control access through the hall. And over here we have automated ticket machines. And here we have actual servers selling tickets. There's a person in those windows. Um, and we're going to pay special attention to this section in a few minutes. So now we can start running the model. And we're going to move into a three-dimensional view here. So it's the same layout, but we've stuck some graphics on there, and it's really come to life. And as we move here, we can see it at a slight angle, and you get a better sense of how these people are moving in the three-dimensional space and seeing the different floors. Um, as we watch these people walk, now that we have a few here, we can just see that they're not following in straight lines. You know, this guy here, he's walking through traffic and doing a totally different pattern than the people around him. So just want to point out that the pedestrians in the Immunologic model here they are basically following three rules. They know where they want to go. 
They know that they don't want to run into a wall, and they try not to run into other people, which I think pretty much sums up, if we really thought about it, how we get where we're going ourselves. Now, we can look at some different camera angles here. So say this was an area of interest in this turnstile area. This is probably not something that you could truly see if you stood in the space and were observing this. Um, perhaps the exit over here is of interest, and we see this is a very busy place, so it may not even be, even if you could get this angle in real life, it may not be the best place to stand. Um, now, another great thing here is that we can just talk about output for a second. And here we have simulation time displaying on the screen, and then a very simple metric of how many passengers are in the hall. Now, this could also be a small graph of the average time in the hall or the average service time. Uh, so this could easily be any sort of metric that matters to you in a numerical way. But another great output is this heat map. So on this heat map here, we can see what paths are people actually following. Now, we see this is a much traversed path from this escalator over here to this one and through these turnstiles. But over here, we see less traffic. Now, here this is, we can look at this and say, well, that's because most people want to go down a level through this escalator. But imagine this was, you know, not uh, a logical choice, but some, for some reason, people are ignoring one of the hallways in your facility and really building up traffic. And this would indicate that maybe that's something to investigate. <clears throat> and now while we're here, we can see a little bit of the visual logic. So any logic uses blocks and a very visual system to define the logic. And so even if you don't understand the code, you can get a sense of understanding that, oh, people that start from the inner city, they are on a different level, so they need to take an escalator to go up and then move on through the model. And this is another great thing about AnyLogic is it's very visual, and even a person that's not well-versed in it can get a sense of what's happening in the model. So if we go back to the 3D version, um, we are going to go look at our ticket office. So right now we see there's no line. This is probably the appropriate number of servers to do the volume that they're expecting. But if instead we turn this service time way up, like 300 times higher, um, We'll soon see, I speed it up here, we'll soon see a, quite the line forming for service at the ticket counters. Now, pretty soon this line is going to start impeding traffic, and this would be something that could be a serious problem. Um, and this parameter is easily controllable from this model. You could have um, an on-off switch or a slider like this, but it makes engaging with what you're seeing a very simple process. Now, if we return here, we'll just talk about one last thing about evacuation. So we see people are filled up. Let's actually uh, get rid of the service queue here so we can see better. Um, so we see the people are moving throughout the system and going about their business. And now they're starting to leave the ticket queue and start exiting the building at what they perceive to be the, the closest exit of choice. And the, only, the people on the escalators continue to come. Um, they didn't get off the escalator and turn around and go the other way. But now if we speed this back up, we can see that pretty soon the entrance hall has cleared. Now, if we were doing this um, in a simulation for you, we could put metrics on there about how long did it take people to evacuate. Did those hit the benchmarks that you were aiming for? Uh, so we've seen that there's a really great input and layout design is very simple and easy to implement. Um, we get a visual output that you can really see how people are interacting with your facility and you know, use different tools like the heat maps or the printed variables to show what's really happening. So we can use these tools to solve security and safety issues in a cost-effective way that doesn't require putting costly changes into your system 
that maybe won't even work correctly or as anticipated. Um, as far as servers, we can optimize the placement of them, maybe the number of them to best utilize your facility. And it's also great in reducing risk in emergency planning. Thank you.